Welcome to our webinar about the Twinket JSON data interface. As you might know from previous webinars from Beckhoff, um, you have the possibility to ask questions during the webinar, which we try to answer during or after the webinar. And um, additionally, you have the possibility to ask questions to the email address you can see here on the screen. We want to start with a um, kind of introduction slide about Twinkit IoT. So with the Twinkit IoT product portfolio, Beckhoff has been offering customers a wide range of IoT technologies since 2015. And um, this overview slide shows the various communication possibilities between the machine or the field level and the cloud. So in the current case, if we have a Twinket 3 controller, um, we can directly communicate with MQTT or HTTP to the cloud. Um, if we have a Twinket 2 controller, we could communicate with ADS to an edge device and from the edge device which runs Twinket 3 again, we can communicate to the cloud. We can also um, deal with third-party controllers. For example, with OPC UA, we can communicate to the edge device and from the edge device to the cloud again with MQDT or HTTP. We have also the possibility to communi communicate directly from the field level to the cloud with our IoT bus coupler EK9160. Um, we from Beckhoff, we have also the answer to the, to the question, what can we do with the collected data? So we have various, various data analytics tools, and, um, but this is not the focus of this webinar. Today we want to talk about a specific product, about the Twinket JSON data interface. So the first question that arises is, what is the Twinket JSON data interface? What can I do with it? Um, from an abstract point of view, um, we have a non-Twinket system, a user application, which communicates with the Twinket PLC um, with JSON documents. So we can send commands with a JSON document and we get a response from the, re response from the Twinket, Twinket PLC um, also as JSON document. Which benefits do we have using the Twinket JSON data interface? Um, we have no pre-configuration required. So after the, the, the Twinket installation, the JSON data interface is right there and can be used to access the complete Twinket symbol info. We have um, the possibility to, do, to use TLS for secured communication. And we, have, we are using the JSON format, which is an easy to understand and widely adopted format in the programming. And last but not least, we have also no dependency to a programming language because we have two communication ways, ADS and MQTT, and both are available in, very in many different programming languages. On the next slides, we will have a closer look on these two communication ways. So first of all, the direct communication with ADS. An ADS client can um, send a request to the ADS interface and the ADS interface will then communicate internally with the Twinket PLC and afterwards send the response back to the ADS client. So in this sample, we have um, the encounter, encounter variable and we want to read it out and the response then contains the value, um, the current value of this variable in the PLC. In addition to the possibility to communicate via ADS, we have also the possibility to communicate via, via MQTT. Um, the Twinket system service integrates an MQTT client. Um, the MQTT client then communicates internally with the ADS interface 
with the Twinkle JSON data interface. So an MQTT client um, which communicates with the um, JSON data interface would send a request to a message broker and the MQTT client of the Twinkle system service will internally um, look for the variable and then communicate it back via the message broker to the MQTT client. The sample that we have here is the same as on the slide before. So we are trying to read out the encounter variable and we get the value in the response. So we have two MQTT clients acting in this communication. The MQTT client of the user application, which is uh, not up to us to connect to the message broker. So we want to talk about how the MQTT client in the Twinkle system service is connected to the message broker. So here we are using the static routes XML. The static routes XML is a file um, which is configuring connections. And we are um, configuring a JSON element in this static routes XML. And this JSON element contains various um, configurations. And um, we have also the possibility to communicate um, securely with the TLS configuration we can see down here. And if we finished configuring this um, document, we will do a Trinket context change and the Trinket context change will then um, lead to the communication of the MQTT client to the message broker. So now we have talked about how to connect and the next step we want to have a look at is um, how is the topic defined um, on which we are communicating with MQTT. So the, t the topic for requests um, consists of the main topic, which is part of the configuration file we saw before, um, the ADS port, which could, for example, be port 851 for the first Twinket 3 SP uh, PL PLC. Sorry, a little bit of German here. And um, we have also the invoke ID. The invoke ID is um, a freely assignable um, ID, which we um, choose. So I've brought also two samples. Um, if we have configured the webinar topic as uh, the main topic in the configuration file, um, and we want to access the first Twinket PLC, and we have 2000 21 as invoke ID. So that is what our request and response topic would look like. Um, the only difference between them two is the request and the response in between. So for completeness, we also want to discuss um, how the um, access via ADS works exactly. So um, an ADS client would um, do a ADS write request to the um, ADS interface. And um, the part to be written in the ADS write is um, the request JSON, and the part to be read is, a, is the response JSON that the PLC sends back to the, um, to the ADS client. And the ADS read write has to be processed on a specific index group index offset combination. So now we had a look at how to communicate with the Twinkle JSON data interface. And the next question that arises is, what possibilities do we have? What functions does the Twinkle JSON data interface offer to us? So first of all, we can read variables. We can read multiple variables. We can read um, variables um, also with the data type. We can write. We can write multiple variables. Um, we can also do method calls, um, RPC method calls with input and output parameters. And last but not least, we can also read out the complete Twinket symbol info. So before we start with a little live demonstration, um, we want to give you some application thoughts. 
um, first of all, an application could read out the com complete Twinkle symbol info from the JSON data interface, send this symbol info to an HMI. Um, then we have some users that can select um, different variables from this symbol info and then read, uh, read or write these variables in the PLC. Another scenario could be that the Twinket PLC is running on a Windows system together with the JSON data interface and um, the MQTT client is running in a container on the Linux system, same as the message broker, and we could then connect the JSON data interface, so the MQTT client of the Twinket system service and the user application to this message broker and we, can't, we could easily set up a communication between Linux and Windows. Um, another scenario could be that we are combining different IoT products. So we have on the one hand the MQTT client, so our function blocks for MQTT communication, and on the other hand the Twinkle JSON data interface. And we communicate um, some values cyclically to the user application and the user application has then the possibility to react on, um, on different um, things. So we can also then process on-demand requests. So if we need some additional information or if we need to write some variables in the PLC. And yes. So now we want to switch over to our application sample. Um, we have a Twinkle Cloud Engineering instance here, which is basically a virtual machine. Um, there we have a Twinkle PLC and the JSON data interface and also the message broker. And we will connect this Twinkle PLC um, and also the MQTT client, um, which is running on, an, on a local engineering laptop and um, we have both of them, as I said before, connected to the message broker and then we will see some sample commands um, of requests to the JSON data interface. So now we will start with our application sample. Um, here you can see the Twinket PLC where we have two counter variables and also a function block. This function block contains a method which is um, a RPC me method with two input variables. And now we want to connect this Twinket PLC, so the um, JSON data interface with the local message broker. And therefore, we will go to the um, configuration file I mentioned before to the static routes XML. Um, the static routes XML uh, is already pre-configured in this case. So we have here a name, um, an IP address, localhost in this case, um, a topic which we call webinar and also the certificate configuration containing the CA certificate and the client certificate with the client key. So now we will save this um, configuration and do a Twinket context change and from there on our MQTT client in the Twinket system service will be connected with the message broker. So that was it with the configuration on PLC side. And next we will have a look at the MQTT client um, which we want to use to access um, the Twinket PLC. So we have connected to the same message broker um, on the cloud engineering instance with the IP address and uh, also the TLS configuration. And we will now see that we um, are connected to this message broker. And um, first we will have a look at the topic. So we have webinar as we configured before, 851 for the first Twinket PLC and 100 as an invoke ID. And we will now build up our subscribe topic based on that, as you can see here. 
and we will now subscribe to that topic and we will now publish some JSON documents and um, have a look at the responses. So, first case is that we want to um, read out a, a value which you can see here the um, response, so the value of the encounter variable. Um, the next step we want to do is we want to read out the encounter variable um, together with um, its data type. So in the next answer, we can also see the data type of the encounter variable. The next step we want to do is that we want to read multiple variables, so um, the encounter variable and the end test variable that we saw before in the PLC configuration. And now we will see that the response from the Twinkit JSON data interface contains both values. Um, after we have done all read methods, we now want to write a value. So we will send um, the 42 as a value to the um, PLC. So the answer tells us that it was successful. Um, we will now try to read it again so that we have an idea that the value has been written correctly. And as you can see here, the value is close to 1000. So this seems to be good. So the next thing we will do is um, to call a method. Um, the method is adding two values. Um, we are calling the method with the values 42 and 23. So we will expect that 65 comes as, an, as a result. And if we now send this JSON document and have a look at the response, we will see 65 is our response. Last but not least, we also want to read out the um, Trinket symbol info. And um, there we have to be careful because um, for, for bigger projects, the, the Trinket symbol info could get very big, a very big string, very big JSON document, but it is, but it is a very powerful feature of the Trinket JSON data interface. So coming to an end now, um, we will do a short summary. Um, we have had a look at the Twinkle JSON data interface today, which is basically there for flexible data exchange between Twinket and customer applications. Um, the JSON data interface requires no additional installation. It comes with the Twinket setup from version 3.1.4024.11. And um, the main advantage that we wanted to point out at the end is that we have the JSON format and many different programming languages um, so we can access the Twinkle JSON data interface from many different environments. Now I, I would like to thank you for your attention and see you in the next webinar. Thank you. <laughs>